Welcome to Simple Robotics, the podcast, a podcast exploring the animation industry one episode at a time. I'm your host, Monique, and you can find me on all social media platforms at Simple Robotics. That is S-I-M-P-L-Y-R-O-B-O-T-I-X. And use the hashtag Simple Robotics Pod to join in on the conversation. That way I can see what you're talking about and reshare it and all that good stuff. Now, today I'm going to be talking about the Pixar Disney animated film that came out not too long ago called Luca. Luca, as this is from Disney Plus, is set in a beautiful seaside town in an Italian riv- Riviera. Um, it's a coming of age story about one young boy experiencing an unforgettable summer filled with gelato, pasta, and endless scooter rides. Luca shares these adventures with his newfound best friend, Alberto, but all the fun is threatened by a deeply held secret. They are sea monsters from another world just below the water surface. Luca is directed by Academy Award nominee Enrico Casarosa from La Luna. I had to take my time because I did not want to butcher that man's last name and produced by andrea warren of lava and cars 3 so um yeah let's just leave that um as being the plot and keep it moving we'll start off with luca this is from the disney fandom website which i have really really been enjoying their thoroughness if you will i believe this is like a wiki over overarching page kind of thing and like when i was doing the avatar episode when i was doing soul luca when i was doing the the mitchells versus the machines these type of web websites have been really really helpful for me so let's go through the characters real quick also i should mention that this is going to be a spoiler ish not ish a spoiler episode so if you do not want this movie to be spoiled uh come back <laughs> and listen to it later but if you don't care you actually want to hear what this movie could be about and some spoilers before you decide to watch it then continue listening so for the third time back to the characters luca is the protagonist of the film he's a sea monster that is influenced by alberto to venture to the surface once he discovers that his parents are going to send him to the deep deep sea away from the surface with his uncle um luca and alberto escape to the italian town of portoroso and enter the portoroso cup so that they can buy a vespa and then see the whole world together Alberto is Luca's new best friend, also a sea monster, and he actually lives on, I'm just going to translate this to English, and it's like the island of the sea, which is an Italian island, and he doesn't have a parental guardian. They get into that a little bit about what happens to, well, just one parent, not both. But Alberto helps uh, Luca escape, right, to Puerto Rosso. And um, Alberto is a little bit older, that's worth mentioning. He's like, if Luca is like 10, 11, Alberto is like 13, 14 type of thing. Next is Julia, who is an Italian teenage girl staying with her father, Massimo, in Puerto Rosso for the summer. She befriends Luca and Alberto and they become like the underdogs as they try to win the Puerto Rosso Cup. I love Julia. She is, um, I'm saying she's sweet. She's precious. She cares a a whole lot about like, or I should say she has a good moral compass, right? And um, I just really appreciate her contribution to the film. You know, Uh, they make a nice team and I get she is around Alberto's age, but I also kind of wonder if she's just a tad bit older. But I think, if anything, they're the same. She's definitely also older than Luca. Then we have Luca's mom, Daniela Paguro, that she's just determined to keep Luca safe. And she regularly warns him about the dangers beyond the sea, you know, about the land monsters that live there. And she's not a pushover. Like, you know, her number one rule is just don't go near the surface, you know, and clearly we see in the film that she's not playing about that. And she goes to great lengths to just show how serious she is about not going to the surface. Next, we have dad Lorenzo Paguro. Um, (laughs) 
he's like definitely the yin to mom's yang, right? He's well-meaning, but he seems to be very distracted, not really all that present. And he's very passionate about his hobby of raising crabs. Like, that's his thing. Which, you know... I guess that's always also kind of like interesting. I, I actually, they, like we can't go off on too many tangents, but yeah, he's proud about raising these crabs and having them be like award winning type of things, you know? Sure, fine. Next, we have Grandma Puguro. I like her a lot. Really like Grandma. Grandma and Luca, like they have an understanding, you know, they're right here with it. And she sees a spark in Luca's eye that he's just longing for more and she celebrates it she like low-key supports him like she covers for him when he comes home like really really late or something like that from hanging out with Alberto she knows that breaking a rule here and there is just a part of growing up and she's just all too happy to be like you know I I didn't see anything and um she's actually a pretty pretty cool character but, you know, she's just, there's a nice reveal at the end of the film with the grandma. Julia's dad, Massimo Marcovaldo. You know, I want to say it kind of with like some Spanish, but I'm like, oh, it's Italian. Julia's dad is an imposing, tattooed, one-armed fisherman. He doesn't really talk too much, but when he does, you know, you're like, ooh. He, like, you know, and... He's clearly, like, someone that doesn't play about catching fish and, like, killing harmful creatures or what have you that are beneath the surface in the ocean, you know? He it seems like he's always had the intention of catching and killing a sea monster. So, definitely, when Luco and Alberto first meet him, they are shook. They're intimidated. Like, he's a big guy, too. And, um... We learn that he, of course, is like a gentle giant type of thing, you know, that and he has a huge soft spot for his daughter. 